we have a guest in the studio. He is a chairman of the Kenya Professional Boxing Commission, Ruben Dolo. Is in the studio. Good morning. Morning, morning, Latif. How Karibu are you? Sana, Thank you. Karibu sana. Huh? Yes. What color How is that? Ndu. No, you're the color person. What color is Ruben's t-shirt? Hot orange. <laughs> Hot orange. Yeah. Damu, damu. <laughs> Hey. Sha, Karibu uh, sana. It's good to have you. Thank you very much. You know, good to see you as well mm. uh, after a long time. Yes. Good. City. Yes. How don't you give uh, the Moshimiwa here a warm welcome with a proverb yes. from Uganda? Our proverbs the whole of this week have been from the country of Uganda and today is our final day. And the proverb for this Friday is a simple straightforward one. Mm -hmm. A foolish person shouldn't make you foolish. A foolish person shouldn't make you foolish. Yes. <laughs> Ruben, what do you understand from uh, what is this proverb saying? Well, I think uh, <clears throat> the land of Matoke, mm -hmm. they came out for a long time that um, they make themselves uh, the peel of Africa. And uh, when uh, of course, uh, city said about uh, that proverb. Uh, to me, I go back and say, uh, there's another one <coughs> which you can compare uh, with what that proverb Ugandan say. Uh, uh, fools can be uh, be there, but you can't uh, make everybody a fool. <laughs> so, uh, to me, I think uh, mm -hmm. you can we, fool we, we, some people sometimes. Yeah, but we 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 don't need to uh, to be uh, people who can be uh, made uh, like uh, come out to be seen. You are not on the right track all the time. Mm. Be a man of your own. Kabisa. Stay on your own track and, and your own own respect. Very good. Tell us about the Kenya Professional Boxing Commission. What is it? Kenya Professional Boxing. You know, uh, it started in 1982, late 1982. Why it started? Uh, you know, uh, those ones who were there during that time, People like us we are the ones who started mm -hmm. and we brought in Joe Cage by then Joe Cage also retired in boxing mm -hmm. and uh, he took us outside of this country uh, it was me and some of my cousins who went we went to German mm -hmm. and others of course went to Denmark people like Mushoki um, after the amateur <laughs> the Olympics in 1972 you know what happened in Munich, German. Mm. It was very sad, especially for us who are Kenyans. What happened with the Palestinians and Israelis? Uh, it was sad. So we had experience. So when we came back, we, we saw about what was happening in the professional side. German didn't have a professional. They had semi-professional. But the, <clears throat> the outside world, like Britain and uh, States and also Denmark, they had their professional side. So we thought that when we go back, uh, uh, our people who are uh, senior by then mm. didn't want we to be like the other people in uh, in states because we are imitating what Ali were doing. Mm. They are earning a lot, respect and everything. But if, if you see, up to now, nobody knows about who won gold in the Olympics. But many people know about let's say tyson mm -hmm. because he became professional this is how it we started then we came back and said no let us start our own professional side in kenya and then we, we we talked with our friends in tanzania so we started you can see we have kenya professional boxing commission mm -hmm. then tanzania professional boxing commission <coughs> uganda professional boxing commission mm -hmm. because we were one we were one mm -hmm. uh it was me and my cousin david atan who is still in German, 
uh, Vitalis Bege, who was also our cousin, and Kina Odiambo were in Uganda. Mm. So there, it was a family. And people in here also, there were Mushoki and Waroinge. It was people who were, of course, uh, putting things together in, uh, in boxing. And all of them were boxers. And all of them were boxers. Were so then we, said, boxers. then we said, no, mm. let us start professional boxing. Mm -hmm. We see how we can, we can also be respected. It was hard with the uh, seniors who were there by then. Uh, the, who was there, uh, Madoka. Mm. It was very difficult for us to, to proceed. But Joe Akech uh, made us where we are right now because he took some of us to German states. By then he was a manager of Panam. Mm. So he, we put him as a chairman. And we also put somebody who had uh, the resources by then. He's, he's now, I think, uh, you, have, you have heard about him, Francis Mburu. You remember Mburu? Mm. Yeah, who was, uh, of course, with these uh, issues with Kinamatiang and everybody. All, yes. So Mburu was our, our, our patron. So he was a patron? Yeah, patron. Okay. And then that's how then we started. Who did we put first? The late Mod Modesto Puni mm -hmm. with um, this guy uh, from Tanzania, who is now the president of Tanzania, Ngoi. Big fight mm. at KCC, packed. Everybody was there. Then things changed, and that's how it started. So now professionalizing boxing basically is where people come to fight for a title, and you make money out of it. Perfect. And perfect. the difference between this and amateur boxing is amateur is amateur. I mean the grassroots. You don't uh, you don't fight for you fight for let's say for your your country for glory uh, for glory and. Um, you represent your country up to the standard of going to the Olympics. Then after that, uh, you can decide to turn professional. And also, you don't go uh, more than uh, four rounds. Mm. Uh, yeah, but you can remember at that time professional. People used to go even 20 rounds. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, uh, of course, of the, uh, you know, your health is more important. Yes. So uh, the rules changed. So they went up to 15 rounds. Then again, I think by then we went for a convention in uh, New York mm. in 89. Uh, as I've said, Joe Akech was our chairman. And then they changed again to 12 rounds. Now, this is how it is. Mm. Yeah, you go for 12 rounds. The amateur people go for four rounds. Four rounds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the difference. But a job is a job. Mm -hmm. Mind you, <laughs> a job is a job. There's no difference between a professional job and an amateur, and an amateur job. job. Yeah, it's how you can job it. <laughs> and who makes the money at the end of it. Of course. So is there any other body that organizes professional boxing uh, competition in the country? Or is it only the preserve of the commission? No, the constitution, the constitution of our country. Mm -hmm. You can't have two bodies running the same, same, uh, 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 type of of of, of sports mm. so we, we they have they we have only one that's kenya professional boxing from the beginning mm. so we can't have two so they have amateur mm -hmm. yes and then now there's, bo there's yes. professional boxing. now i think they've they've changed to bfk i think so boxing federation of kenya boxing federation as now the professional boxing commission what exactly do you do? Do you start from grassroots level, identifying uh, potential talent, nurturing that talent, recruiting them to become professional directly? Or do you have to wait for amateurs who feel they want to become professionals? Very good. Very good question, Nadia. Yes, uh, we don't go to the grassroots. We leave it to the amateur people. Because for them, uh, you go for four rounds, then after that you qualify to become a professional or you just retire mm. it depends on what you are you are you are, you are how reconditioned you are so for us we we work together with the amateur young 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 uh, young young boxers mm -hmm. and then we make them a turn professional uh, you know the, the issue here is uh, we have a problem with our uh, boxers turning professional mm. because we in africa you know we we we, we don't have the 
the resources and we don't have the the tv the radios in like in south africa what they're doing uh or the the united kingdom uh, so we, we 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 try our best uh, and to convince them and we look for companies like recently just three weeks ago uh, there is this company uh, phoenix uh, we made sure that uh, they uh, uh, contracted our senior boxer uh, his name is okwiri uh, to take care of, of okwiri and also to promote him so that's what we are doing we are, we are planning now that's what we are doing also to make them they will they get a good manager because in professional you need to have first you need to have a good trainer a professional one mm -hmm. good manager so that you can you you can be a, a professional you you make sure that that's your life and uh, it's not like uh, when when we are there mm. we we ourselves we are doing what we are supposed to do mm. how would you if you gave an outlook on the boxing fraternity situation the sport in general and how it affected or how it contributed to Kenya's general outlook 20 years ago and what it looks like today how would you compare the two the professional yes the profession because i, I can't talk about the amateur because i left the amateur no you want me to talk about amateur as well i mean let's look across board across and we're board. looking at it as a sport that essentially could raise the profile of the country internationally could provide possible engagement for people here in the country and also then could provide career objectives for people who are going into sport what does it look like what are the challenges are we saying that where we've reached with boxing as a sport in Kenya is the summit or could more be done? Good, good, good. And how old are you? Oh, wow. <laughs> she is young. She's young, yes. She's youthful. Very good question, she yes. put it. <laughs> Very youthful. Now, let me tell you something. Uh, the, the 60s, let's say from the late 50s up to the 60s and late 70s, uh, Amateur boxing was very, very, I mean, uh, progressive in our country. Mm -hmm. I mean, in Africa, I think we were number two. If you compare, it was Kenya, Uganda, Ghana. Mm -hmm. We were competing with only, in, 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 in the Commonwealth, we were competing with maybe, you can say, Ireland, not even England. Because when we used to go and uh, go for the, uh, let's say, Olympic, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Commonwealth, I mean, we used to, to, to smash those uh, British <laughs> like hell. <laughs> so we were in, in, in Africa, we were number, I can say, number two uh, or number three. We used to compete, as I'm saying, mm. with people like Ghana, then Uganda. That's why you see those years. Mm. Uh, uh, we, we used to get medals, go to the Olympics. Mm -hmm. Our first medal was in uh, Mexico, mm -hmm. Waruinge. Then, uh, 1972, two medals. Now, you compare uh, the best, even up to now, is a record in Africa. When we took our young guy, uh, I mean, Wang Wangila, mm. uh, from my estate, uh, we used to train him to uh, uh, South Korea. Mm. We are the first country in, uh, in Africa to, to have gold. Now, up to now, it's a record. Then it went down. And you know, tell me, I'll tell you something. Mm. There's a lot of politics in sports and politics itself. Yeah. Then politics came in mm -hmm. because boxing became number two after football. Mm -hmm. So, uh, things changed and uh, say and uh, uh, politicians came in mm. made sure that uh, what is this these footballers we need to change it uh, they were supposed to bring Africa I don't know football whatever here in in uh, in Kenya mm. if you can remember people like um, the late I um, mean Job Omino mm. and his secretary was Omingo I don't know who's that in football mm. they wanted to bring i mean africa africa whatever federation federation yes. here mm. and then it was just uh, we didn't hear anything about mm -hmm. that then in boxing as well mm. you know people used to be 
I mean, enrolled in uh, parastate organizations. Mm. Poster. They used to have, uh, uh, you know, you know, a the, boxing unit. Yeah. So you, you are employed. Kenya you are because... being employed. Then you 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 earn something, mm. and you participate. It was very good. Mm. Then after that, things went down. Mm. Everything went down. You're saying politics. Mm. Politics changed everything. Changed, so, mm. you know, why would any, in this why country would politics changed even, even in boxing. Yeah. Yeah. So are you saying there was no ownership then of those who were involved in the sport, the practitioners of the sport, that something like politics would come in and sweep everything over and everybody was left with nothing, but these are the folks who are actually in the ring, as it were? Well, the, the owners, the owners, the owners of 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 uh, what you are saying the owners of uh, of all these i mean uh, parastate organization were people who are not interested in football and boxing so in to me i'll be i'll be frank mm. they were just interested in athletics and this is what killed uh, football and killed uh, boxing and this is what is happening even up to now they don't care about they just talk about Sisinuatuma hustlers, mm -hmm. but they're not hustlers. They don't care about the really original hustlers. Mm. So they kill the original hustlers to pretend, which is not right. Mm. We, we ha that's why you see when you ask them about what happened. Up to now, it's difficult. Every sport has gone down, not only boxing. Mm because politics came in and believe me don't don't mix politics and sports sports bring people together but if you just bring politics and sports you are killing it but you know there are those who argue maybe one doesn't hear of much politics in boxing one hears of the business angle especially the professional aspects of uh, boxing but sports has its own politics Maybe we are saying that people who are politically inclined or commercially inclined and not the people who were in the profession taking place in leadership came in and took over. Because if you look at, for instance, you mentioned the Commonwealth. Up until 19, uh, it is what is, 1998, you look at Kenyan's performances. We were winning golds and silvers. Then after that, we're just in the bronze bra uh, bracket. So, so, so you have to wonder what happened. And maybe what you're saying is true. Now, what am I getting? And I'm getting at this. Huh? I'm saying, if I look at sports in totality in this country, and I look at the money associated with it, let's talk about athletics. Let's talk about football. Let's talk about motorsports. There are world bodies that keep giving money to these organizations. Now, are we saying that those who then find themselves in a position of management or those who are at the helm of the leadership in all these sports, that we are seeing a shift from an interest in the sport itself to the individuals who are actually there? Because if indeed the focus was on the uh, sports people, then we would see the sports, the sport rather, growing more and more and more. Well, very good, City. Uh, I agree with you. But, uh, you know, things change every day. You know, everything now is professional. Mm. Why I'm saying that? Uh, before, as we started this Kenya Professional Boxing Commission, we didn't have, uh, the, let, let's say, I can put this way, I'm sorry to say that. Uh, athletics, they didn't, they, they used not go and run for money. Mm. Can you remember? Yes. But now, they are the ones who earn a lot of money. Yeah. Than uh, even uh, boxing, or even in uh, tennis, or even other, other, football. others, other, other for even football. Mm -hmm. So things changed, and this is how also we need to do in in, in this country. We need to uh, try and see if we don't depend on only one sport, type of sport, in this nation. We need to diverse. We need to make sure we bring every sports to be known that's why when we go to the commonwealth or we go to the olympics you see we have only medals from one sport mm. the rest is nothing why should we do that Can to come again question, yes please the 
at the level at the amateur level would i be correct in assuming that the government has a role because we have an entire ministry that deals with sports that the progression of the sport at some level should be uh, the responsibility of the government because the government allocates money to that ministry the government allocates money for the growth of the sport so would one be correct in saying that at the amateur level the government plays a role very much yes very much yes and uh, what you have said is uh, exactly what I'm trying to put it mm. remember what happened in the Olympics of 19, uh, 2016 mm -hmm. what happened Rio Rio mm. people mm. went to court mm. because of what Mm. Well, there were Corru a well, lot of allegations, allegations of, of corruption, corruption and management of, mm. you know, event funds. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, this is it, and uh, uh, we we have to look at the government looks down upon sports mm -hmm. because they don't care. They bring people who are not even know anything about sports. They just put somebody there because of politics. Uh, who doesn't even know anything about athletics or anything about football or anything about tennis well, just because mm. he, he they want to cover something there they bring anybody from anywhere <laughs> just a figure who should be and, and this is, I think, a pertinent question, uh, because we look at the sports associations around the country, whether you're dealing with, you know, FKF, whether you're dealing with, you know, uh, KBF, whether you're dealing with KA, across board. Who should sit in these positions? We've seen countries the world over who have then leapt from one level to the next purely because of their sports and their activities and how those things have been organized. We can see that. We know that. There are some countries you wouldn't hear anything about there. Um, their you know foreign policy or their diplomacy you would hear about their sports before you hear anything about the rest but it is enough for them to actually get onto the global stage we've seen this what needs to happen and i think there's a question that has been has been asked over and over again you hear you hear you're saying that they just put anybody in those positions who needs to be there what needs to happen? It's boxing, it's basketball, it's rugby, it's a crossboard. What actually needs to happen from your perspective? Good. I mean, you need to put somebody who has gone through, who has got a pinch of what happened in sports, who has got experience, who has gone through, who has, uh, let's say, uh, a knowledge of sports. But don't just get somebody from his or her bed in the morning eh, because of her face and then you bring her there or he there and say you are going to be the minister of sports. He doesn't know anything about or she doesn't know nothing mm. about what sports is all about. This is sad. Which Look at what is happening in, in, in Europe. Mm. All those leadership are people who went through sports in South Africa the same that's why they're a bit um, you know better than us even nowadays in Nigeria they are doing better than us they put people who have gone through sports we see it put people where in as minister in a, yeah, in administration let's take a break it's 29 minutes to 8. <laughs> I know, Sid, you have just about to ask Let a question. Our, our guest in the <laughs> studio this morning is the chairman of the Kenya Professional Boxing Commission, Ruben Dolo. We are talking about the sports of boxing and whether we are likely to head back to the glory days of boxing. Also, not just concentrating on boxing, but looking at sports in general. And he says, look, we need to think about the leadership of sports in general in the country. We'll ask him more questions about that. This is the Situation Room. The only way to start your day. Ruben Dolo, Chairman, the Kenya Professional Boxing Commission. We're talking about professionalizing and uh, bringing boxing back to its glory days. Mashimo, you talked about the very many things that have happened in the sport. So in the early days, boxing was actually doing very well, both amateur and then you brought in the Professional Boxing Commission. And you started, you know, being able to send boxers to 
uh, participate in, in tournaments and championships where they would make money and win uh, the belts. And then you've even said politics started creeping into the sport and it also crept into football. But um, if you look at athletics, it's the one where our athletes are actually still making money. And you cannot compare how uh, many of our athletes are making money to any of the other sports, not in hockey, not rugby, not football, not definitely not boxing. But then what happened? How is it that it's possible for athletes to be able to be in the same same country you know the same same you know government and administration and they're able to make money but not the same for boxing not the same for the other sports and i want to put it to put it to you that it's because of the management of the various federations that the leadership like city was saying earlier <coughs> leadership is not focused on on growing and developing the sport the leadership is more focused on grabbing the money that comes from outside into the federations so we want to keep it there athletes are able to go out participate in championships and then they get invited into the money making events they go into olympics they go into commonwealth they go into uh, the world athletics championships from there from winning a bronze or silver or gold you are then invited into the diamond league you're invited into the other uh, areas where you start now making money they do make money why can't you as a federation that's been here since the 19 early 80s do the same for our boxers yes yes uh latif uh, very good. thank you yes uh in fact why i said that uh, that the government have looked down upon uh, sports and that's they were just concentrating on athletics uh, because uh, go back again i'll go back again it's politics they didn't care about uh, they wanted to please the leadership which was there at that time if you look at really what happened in 87 in kenya when we had the africa games here in boxing we won about eight gold medals mm -hmm. what after, what happened after that things went down they didn't care After that, we tried on how we can convince the leadership by then. They were telling us, no. What is the leadership? The le you mean? The leadership the president? which was there, the leadership which was there, mm. in let's say even in boxing, was from the, what, can, what I can say, uh, the police forces, mm. the uh, army. Mm. So all these wanted to please the leadership of the government of the day mm -hmm. you see and uh, of course the government of the day by then uh, were very very much interested in athletics and not other sports on my side that's what I, yeah on my side that's what i looked at how how, now, did, how do you make this because if we hosted the Africa Championships here, and we had very many boxers in 1987 who were winning. We won eight gold medals. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yes. The same same political leadership of the day had been there for um, nine years. So when did their mind change? And what they made their mind shift from promoting <laughs> boxers because when we to promoting them. athletes more? Yeah, because when we told them about now, if we can, we have won eight medals, and if we can change this one and make sure we promote our young boxers, have academies, bring people, and, and some of them started, I remember they even put academies in uh, Nakuru, but that was only football and other places they put uh, how many academies about two or three mm -hmm. one in akuru one in eldoret and i think another one was put in um in uh, here in nairobi somewhere in uh, ngong in gong mm. only that and then when we said now why don't we also make sure all these boxes who are there who are there can turn professional 
and we, we, we change the standard of our boxing in this country. You know what they told us? Mm. We are not going to allow the boxers who are in amateur, they have to stay in amateur. We had to force, we had to make sure we brought somebody from states who came and said, no, when uh, uh, Wangila won gold, we brought somebody, top ranks in, uh, from states, and of course we said, no, it can't happen. We, this one, where is he going to go? Mm. If he has won gold, which, which amateur again is he doing? Yeah, what else is he fighting yeah, for? Where, where, what, what is he fighting for? Mm. We just, you cannot just put somebody there to be an amateur and just because you are, you are the, the captain or you are uh, the brigadier and you feel that he's going to earn more money than you. Mm. Eh? And then you, you, because he's junior, and then you, you, you don't care about, uh, about, uh, about his life. So we, we took Wangila, we brought uh, somebody who was the manager of uh, Top Rank in, in Las Vegas. Then we, we took Wangila to Las Vegas. And that's when now we started again. Mishmiwa, can I ask you this question? Eh? Mm. Uh, you know, my mind has gone back to the period of the 60s and 70s. Eh? And I'm looking at the places where most of our boxers came from. It was Eastland. But were there not very many boxing clubs then? The social halls. All the social halls. Yes. Uh, I mean, boxing was a sport that attracted very many young people. I mean, football also did, but we're talking about boxing now. So, there was a wealth of talent that grew up during that era. And then, when people like you were boxing, Joe Cage, and then where Ruinge came in, Mushoki came in, you see, because of the fame and the wins, Boxing now became a thing that people could see was something that one could get into. Now, the goals that we speak of arose from that very beginning. There was this wealth of talent that was grown over a period. I'm still stuck on this issue of the role of government. It was a thriving sport. There were young people in it. Then, it just dipped. Let me ask the question, City. Yes. And so we, we have all these things. The yes. social halls were active. They were very active. And you had all these, you know, boxing clubs. Yes. In each estate had a boxing club. And yes. Were, and there was competition even among there was them. competition. Yes. Was the government involved? That's the point. You've understood it perfectly. Very good. Very good. I like the way you had put it. And all those halls he's talking about right now became churches. And kiosks. <laughs> and kiosks. Mm. <laughs> Can you believe it? Oh, we tried our best. Even when I went to Parliament, I did my best to make sure that all those holes go back to where it used to be during our days. But we were told, you cannot do anything. These holes now need to make money who was saying i mean <laughs> well who are saying Look, you uh, are if who are saying you are in government who are saying we uh, after I mean, the kanu years you yes. are in parliament yeah in the new vibrant years of you know NARC and multi-party multi-party and who is this who are saying you know we cannot do that because initially you were saying the kanu regime then was you know trying to curtail the development of these other sports and trying only to promote athletics was it the same thing through the 90s into the 2000s well, uh, well uh, i can't say only mm. the kanu government but the people who are put there go back to what i said Native. the people who are put there they were not interested in any other type of sports. They wanted to please the leadership of the government of the day. That's why they were using those halls, make them churches, don't care about, I mean, uh, boxers, don't care about badminton, because I remember in the morning mm. sometimes in our estate in Jericho, mm. in that hall of ours, if we, the boxing was on this side of Lumumba, the one down there at our, our place, we used to have badminton yep. and other sports. They all went dead. 
You see, because of what? Those people, when we used to go to uh, uh, the uh, administration, they tell us, no, we, we have to repair these holes, there's no money, but you know, it belongs to the government. So you are being told, you people, you have to bring uh, changa changa, bring money, uh, uh, make sure that you repair that hole, mm. not, not us. We don't have the money. After that, they were now taken by people from the church. Okay. And all those holes now go back to those places. You'll find churches inside and not sports. Can you paint a picture for us of how the sport, it doesn't matter which sport it is, but let's focus on boxing. How the sport then actually changed the lives of those who were involved in them. Somebody who takes up the sport of boxing and is supported by the community and what now it was able to do for young sports people in the community and then paint a picture of how that changed when these social halls shut down when the support was no longer there what did the sport actually do for people when it was vibrant and active yes uh, you know sometimes people like us we feel like crying we have two sides of what you have you have put it some of my colleagues who are there legends became blind i'm going back some of them now i'm not with them because of the frustrations i remember uh, as i've uh, told you in uh, those sides of ours let's say in, in uh, what i mean uh, sit has put it in islands we used to be one because our parents came from western with otc we didn't come by by bicycle or walking by otc came down this way and then our parents stayed in the estates we were depending on them they brought us what we used to know is all about sports or ours was about boxing because you have to be tough to stay in those areas after that we became and represent this country mm -hmm. frustrated nothing i remember one of my my cousin he used to be known as moi the black bomber he became blind. He used to walk around in the streets, blind. And he won gold for Africa Championship in 1976 in Algeria. He went blind and died. Another, also relative of mine, he died just recently, 10 years ago. He became an African champion in Uganda. David, David uh, uh, I mean, uh, James Omondi, Dimosh, mm -hmm. also died. There were no help. So it's only a few of us who you can see now. I'm here. I became an MP. Because I didn't want to make, let's say, um, politics as something that you, you are there to be proud of. Because mm -hmm. it's a bond. And that's why I said you have to come and become yourself. Many people what you, you put it, many of our boxers suffered. Even we, we recruited another, another young girl who became very popular, Congestina. He used to play football. Mm -hmm. She used to play football. And then in Makongeni, I've seen another old man here from Makongeni. I don't know from, he's from the education side. Akelo mm Misori. -hmm. Mm -hmm. Akelo Misori from Makongeni. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, you know, we, he was from Makongeni those years. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, that, that girl was from Makongeni, Makolandas. Then we brought her into, into uh, boxing. boxing because we saw her, the talent that she had. But what happened again? She became popular, represents the, the country, became a world champion. Just like that, it went, went down. Professional. She went professional? Yeah, professional. Yes. Uh -huh. Just like that. So why did her professional career not take off? Well, I think uh, when she went to, when she went to uh, States, 
she was being mismanaged by other Americans. I can say it was part of the managers which she had. I misused her, and that's what happened. We tried our best. Could the commission have helped? We did. Intervene? We did. We did. We did. We did. We did our best. We did. That's why we brought her back. But you know, then she made a lot of money. Then uh, it went down. You know. Now you know the frustration. Mm. The frustration of what happened. Now she always think about what she made. Uh, when she thinks about boxing, uh, you can see we because we know what happened. Her mind. Her mind now changes. Mm. Anything when she when she goes back, her mind changes. You see, so this is what I'm saying. Uh, there are good things w what happen in in boxing, mm -hmm. and or but very few. What I'm trying to go towards here is look at if you can actually pinpoint the huge differences that this sport made in the lives of young people in the lives of sportsmen and women in the lives of community then it would be a clear indication that those in the positions which you say should be responsible for this which city saying there is a responsibility of government to nurture some of these things then it should then point to work that then must be done in these areas if it is clear that the benefits far outweigh um, anything else then it is obviously something that should be revived that the work towards the revival of some of these sports like you say that have been you know tossed out the window then should be quite uh, deliberate f to be able to bring them back yeah yeah but uh, uh, we, we also they I, I can't blame the government all the time mm. it's also about I mean uh, you yourself mm -hmm as a sports person yes it's not only in boxing mm -hmm. but we have seen not in only in africa even in europe mm. you can remember uh, as uh, our, our footballer very famous during our days i'm sorry to go back what uh, city is talking we are going back uh, george best mm. some of us if some of you if you remember was a famous footballer from Manchester United, mm -hmm. George the Best, mm -hmm. until he was called the Best, mm -hmm. George Best. What happened to him? He became a street guy. So it's sometimes how you can uh, manage yourself, how you can be serious on what and careful. Mm. The rest, the rest is uh, the government can help, but it's it's an, uh, from the grassroots and then. The government can help from the grassroots, put you at the right uh, track, and then manage yourself. The good and the bad can come if you don't have discipline. Mm -hmm. So it's about discipline. Mm. Yes. And then I see a role then here that <coughs> the Professional Boxing Commission would play. Because you tap talent that's already been developed from the amateur side good you see the ones that are developing the ones that are participating in various tournaments and events and then you go and tap them and bring them onto the professional side which means that now you're introducing for professionalism and all the all those other aspects discipline they already have the discipline as well going up in in amateur but now you're bringing in management you're bringing in marketing you're bringing in all these other aspects i'm struggling to look back ruben at the very many boxers that we see going for Olympics and for Commonwealth and hearing their names when it comes to professional side. And I wonder, is it your commission that's not doing the most that it should be doing? No. Uh, ours, it's um, because when they, uh, they turn professional, and that's why I'm saying we, we get a lot of difficulties to make them turn professional. Mm. Because most of these who, who go to the Olympics or Commonwealth, are uh, the ones who are in um, this I can say uh, civil servants, the ones from the armed forces, mm. from the police, prisons, the prisons. So <clears throat> the leadership on 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 that side don't want to allow them to turn prof profession. Why? Because if they turn professional, they they will uh, uh, the leadership there will be seen they are doing nothing. So for them again to, to, to tap talent from the grassroots, it takes time. So they want to make sure that that guy stays there until he's 
so they don't 50. let them go until he's fi- they don't let them go if look somebody- at what happened to this young boy uh, nick okot now he's 47 and still they want to make him fight eh. if somebody becomes professional can you imagine do they have to leave amateur yes that's a that's the rule that's the rule unlike athletics where you are no, 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 no. professional no. and you can still no they have to leave amateur so they don't allow them to turn professional until they are 50s <laughs> it's a fact look at what nick look at the others that's until we ourselves ourselves at that time we said no we had to get out of this country and left for german as a family of three mm. When we came back in 1972 from the Olympics, we said no. Our elder brother David Atan told, told us, and another cousin of ours who is now back, in, back home, Mohammed Abdallah Kent, we were left here, three of us, and one was in Uganda, our cousin as well, mm. Bege. So all of us, we went to German. So we were told, if you come back, we'll punish you. We said we are not coming back. Kaini. We stayed in German for six years. And made your money. Yeah, and made our money. And, and my day, my friend, mm. Latif. Those days, uh, we, we used to make money in, in, in German, Deutschmark. Ha, when we come here, the only hotel was Hilton. Baba. <laughs> 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 The glory no days, the glory days. <laughs> Hope we can get back there. Ruben, thank you very much for joining us today. We'll keep inviting you so we can see. I mean, what these are conversations that ought to happen mm-hmm. because there are people who are young men and women who yes. are growing up, who are watching boxing and they'd like to go into this game. But of course, everybody else looks at them and sees what happens. How do I make my money? Ruben Dolo chairman of the kenya professional boxing commission we've been talking about kenya's glory days in boxing and what we need to do to take it back there